Justice Kavanaugh. Mr. Spirit. So, Mr. Gannon, I had understood the government, this goes to the threshold question, I had understood the government to essentially be asking us to take Justice Scalia's position in DIN, but based on some of your colloquies with my colleagues today, I'm thinking that maybe what the government's first order position is, and I had not gotten this from the brief, I thought you just mentioned it in a footnote, is to say that Mandel should never have assumed that there was an exception if there was a fundamental right implicated. Is that right? Well, I, I think that the, the point of Justice Kennedy's, I mean, Justice Scalia's plurality opinion in Din would be that there wouldn't be an exception to consular non-reviewability that applied anyway. So I think it would get there one way or no, the other. No, I agree, but it's different. I mean, I think Justice Kagan called it a much more dramatic holding. It would be different. I, I guess I see you potentially asking us to do one of two things. One would be to say, there's no fundamental right here. She doesn't have a fundamental right in having her spouse live with her in the United States. And so the Mandel exception isn't triggered and she's not entitled to anything. That is our, that is our front line position. I agree. Okay. Um, so you're not asking us to say, and by the way, people shouldn't have an opportunity to show that there's a fundamental right implicated because after all, Mandel had just assumed that. It didn't say that you are entitled to get a Mandel explanation if you can point to the existence of a fundamental right. That, that's saying? right, and I was I was saying, um, for purposes of the assumption in Justice Kagan's question, that if the, if we assume that there is a constitutional liberty interest that is sufficient to trigger that review in Mandel, why isn't this one equally good? Right. And um, our position is that this is not, um, as the yes. plurality concluded in Kerry against Din, not a sufficient liberty interest to trigger any exception to consular non-reviewability that would look like Mandel review. So we think you don't get to Mandel review one way or the other. No, no, and I understand that, but I guess, and I, I'm, I'm still not quite sure what your position is. I understand that. I'm just asking you, are you asking us to say, to go still further than that and say, and by the way, Mandel just assumed that there would be an exception to consular non-reviewability if there was a fundamental right implicated. But we think there's no such exception at all. So not only is this one not good enough, there's not, are you asking us to do that? I, I don't think you need to do that. I think the question presented is based on the idea that there is the background of constant okay. non-reviewability and the exception is not triggered that is what I for that reason. Okay, uh, that is what I understood you to be asking from your brief and I thought you were asking for more in the course of the argument. Okay, this goes to Justice Gorsuch's questions about what might happen. And this is something that I'll ask to the other side as well. But what do you understand the further process to be? Because it doesn't do someone all that much good just to know what the reason was. You know, as, as, as Justice Sotomayor was saying, if, if you think my husband is John Doe, but he's actually Jack Smith and has no ties to MS-13, the value of that information would be to have some opportunity to be heard about why it's wrong. But Mandel really is just about notice, and none of the court's cases, which really just kind of Mandel and Din, have gotten into what would happen after that. What is your understanding? Would they have to go back to the State Department, go back to the consular official? Is the idea that the district court would hear, have some opportunity to hear why this is wrong and why the tattoos didn't really show an MS-13 affiliation? I, they, they might contemplate that, that, that that's what they would be getting because they want the information that is what he said or what he did. We don't, we don't think that that's appropriate. I think that um, if, if, if the court were to say that I, I, so I'm not, I'm not sure what, what they think is going to happen with respect to that. Um, they could refile a new application with the State Department. If they have this information, they will know this was the reason for the first denial. But that doesn't mean that the point of Mandel isn't actually notice. Um, it's confirmation that the government had a reason. And so I, I'm, I'm still fighting the premise that the point of Mandel is to to provide the person who is complaining with some form of redress. It's instead just a confirmation that the government had a legitimate reason to do what it did here. There are procedures within the State Department um, that there were multiple levels of review of this decision. Any time that there's a denial that has to be reviewed by a supervisor, this particular basis for inadmissibility needs to be based on an advisory opinion from Washington, D.C. Um, and so there are lots of other ways in which the State Department can be asked to go back and improve this decision. We don't think that that should be done at the behest of, of judicial review and a court saying, um, you have to do this and I want to see all of your evidence.
Okay, so the government's position is that even if Mandel applies, once you point to a reason, whatever, whatever is required to make that reason sufficient, that would be kind of the end of it anyway. Yes, as Justice Gorsuch yeah. was just quoting from the prayer for relief in the complaint, it would be a declaration that that's not a good enough reason. And then you uh, go on your way, and if you want to try to if, go back to the State if, Department. If, if, if they want to refile, um, since they're past the time for reconsideration of this decision, they would have a judicial decision that says that that reason wasn't good enough on the basis of what, the, what was before the, the agency at the time. Um, and, and, and it might come out differently the next time. But would there be some process in the State Department for letting them make their case that these MS, that these tattoos, for example, didn't actually show an affiliation with MS-13? Or is it just like you file for reconsideration and the State Department says, okay, well, that wasn't good enough, but we still think, you know, and maybe just add a little bit more? I mean, they did provide that information, information. to the State Department. Right. The consul, the, the officers looked at that information and concluded that it didn't change their answer. I understand that, and they, they weren't satisfied. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you.